Russo'sBrand.com, where the pros are the pros. Castrating the marks. All right, let's go to a Tony Khan clip. This is from the audio media call that they did before the pay-per-view Wrestle Dream. This was sent in by Francesco Castano. I love wrestling, and one of the great things about wrestling is that because it's a 52-week-a-year business, and we all, for the most part, tend to keep up on it year-round, and, you know, throughout seasons changing and, and lives and responsibilities, wrestling's always there for us, and... Oh my God, mm-hmm. Jeff! I, wrestling is oh, wrestling's the one thing that has never let me down, bro. Through <laughs> all the seasons, through thick and thin, through life and death, Jeff, wrestling is always there for me. Oh my God! Speaking of children, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a constantly evolving love, and I think that all of us tend to find ourselves falling back in love with wrestling. Oh, bro, please. Wait, I, I hope he's not talking for all of us, bro. I really hope he's not talking for all of us. First of all, bro, if you're in love with wrestling, you've got a problem. You, you've got a problem, bro. Enjoying something, yes. Being entertained with something, yes. A fan of something, yes. Being in love with something, you have a freaking problem, bro. Falling back in love with wrestling several times a year. And oh, he's doing uh, I'm in. <laughs> Go back, bro. There was a yeah. couple of the. <laughs> yeah. In there. He's, yeah. He's getting excited again. Yeah. yeah. Falling back in love with wrestling several times a year. And uh, I'm in one of those phases. I'm loving wrestling right now. And. And, and we, we're not supposed to call this guy a mark. Yeah. That you, you're, you're listening to this, and this is not a mark. This guy is telling you, I'm falling in love with wrestling again. And this is not a mark. Love wrestling, you know, and but I all, but sometimes I fall deeper in love with it. And, um, and I really wanted to show the fans Samoa Joe versus Kenta Kobashi for anyone who hadn't seen it last week. <laughs> he, he loves wrestling so much i wanted to show him some old joe versus kenta Kobayashi. oh my god i don't know what i would say that about anything in my life like outside of my family i'm yeah i'm jeff i'm listen man i gotta tell you i last night man i i i put abbey road on my turntable uh, Jeff, I fell in love with the Beatles all over again. I just, I absolutely felt like, wh- wh- oh, my, bro, this pathetic, man. I, I And I could understand, bro, if you're one of these people that don't have a life, this is a guy, the Jacksonville Jaguars, the freaking soccer team. Like, this is a guy that has it all. And he's sitting there falling in love with wrestling again and again and again and again and again. All right, well, we know Tony Khan's a busy man, but how long does he have to spend on a wrestling show if he has to make a change or if somebody's sick or somebody has to drop out of a show? We'll go back to that media call. This was sent in by Francesco Castano. Uh, that are being affected by this and realizing that there's a lot of people with tough circumstances. So if I spend 18, 19 hours in the office working on a wrestling show day in, day out, uh, there are people with way worse problems than that. I'm Bro, I got, I got to tell you position. something. I, I got to be honest with you. If you're spending 18, 19 hours on a two hour show and we see the show that you put out, you don't have a creative bone in your body. I mean, my God, Jeff, anybody can go to, you know, freaking youtube.com forward slash at RMP wrestling. Jeff, I sit down and between the ideas coming to me, me plotting them out on paper, me going back, putting them in the computer, and then timing out the show, Jeff, 90 minutes to two hours. 90 minutes to two hours. That's how long it takes. So he's either, what you just said, not creative, or he's full of shit. He's full of shit. He's, He's full of shit. There is no way... 
those shows that are on that network, it is taking him that long to write. Absolutely no freaking way. And that only leaves, if this was an accurate description of how long he's spending a day on these shows, that leaves six hours to sleep, eat, Jacksonville Jaguars job, yep. the Fulham football team job. Yep. Girlfriend. Yeah, girlfriend. Come yep. on, man. There's no way. Yeah, Jeff, it, it's it's ridiculous. Well, Meltzer's at it again. He actually quoted uh, two Hameen Media <laughs> video clips this week. I don't know how he keeps replying. To, he gives us more promotion, I think, than anybody. <laughs> like, so this one here, uh, this was sent in by Brandon and Matthew Ortiz. So Hameen Media had put out a clip of you and me talking about <laughs> Meltzer being being smug when he when he was talking about all the dumb shits that exposed yeah. himself and, 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 and he would and he didn't mention names he didn't mention right, names exactly. right yeah, yeah yeah which by the way you call him out for being bald and dyeing his hair red he retweet he retweeted this to his audience you yeah. call him bald and shit yeah. so they said who's really out of touch because remember he said everybody's out of touch right but him but him right. with the red hair and the bald spot yeah so Dave replies to this tweet Clearly not me, given I've covered the deal for months that all the rest of these guys denied or ignored what it meant and are, are now still trying to put the AEW bleeding money spin out. Oh, okay, Seriously, I am being serious. Why does he keep saying you guys and these guys? Why can't he say who? Bro, Vic Venom did a show today and the show was about you know, you got to be careful when you're listening to these podcasts because these are veterans of the business. These are professionals. So you never know if they're in character or it's really them. Like, and, and I use Michael Myers for a example. If Michael Myers is doing a podcast as Michael Myers, we know it's Michael Myers. If Michael Myers is doing a podcast as Austin Powers, we know it's Austin Powers. Okay. But what I said is, you know, Guys like Cornette, guys like Eric Bischoff, guys like Bubba Ray Dudley, guys like Rikishi. When they're doing a podcast, is that them or is that their wrestling persona? Because it's one in the same. But I mentioned the names. I don't understand. Who, why won't he tell us who he's talking about? Clearly not me being who's out of touch. Clearly not me, given I covered the deal for months. That all the rest of these guys, okay, so all the rest of these guys is what he said. The so rest it, of these guys. Right? All the rest of these guys denied or ignored what it meant and are still trying to put the AEW bleeding money spin out. Okay, denied what? That they were going to get a TV deal and we didn't understand what it meant if they did? Yeah. Well, what 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 does that even mean? We 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 wouldn't understand what would happen if they got a TV deal? Yeah. And if they're not bleeding money, first of all, no, I don't, I don't know who said they're bleeding money. We've speculated that they are in the red. We've questioned right? the payroll, right? We've, we've questioned the payroll. Yes. But numerous times. Right. So if that's not true, show us Dave, and right. we're going to get to that later because yeah. he's going to make a big claim later in the show. We have another yeah. tweet, Yeah. but if, if we're wrong, about the bleeding money thing. And that, again, we've always speculated that. Nobody's ever said they are. Right, because we don't know. We don't know. We we had the video game. We had the Forbes article that said they were in the red. The the insane amount of talent that they have under contract. And, and the low ticket sales. And, and, ticket continue, sales. and continue to sign. Yeah, and yeah. low ticket sales. So right. speculation would be, wow, they're, they're probably not making a lot of money, if yeah. any at all. So this Meltzer tweet sent in by Wilfredo Quinones, Greg O'Grady, and Ivan Batista. This is this is what I was talking about earlier. So he claims, you know, we've all been proven wrong that we're saying that they are bleeding money or whatever he said in that other tweet, right? Well, get, get this tweet. Dave tweets, with a conservative model factoring in no new international deals, and we've already seen a new one yesterday, and no additional TV deals, AEW next year, so AEW in 2025, 2025 right. will be more profitable than the entirety of WCW's 13 years combined, WWF from 1990 to 1998 combined, 
and WWE every year from 2011 to 2017. Okay. If that's where he's, if that's what he's claiming, break down those numbers for us. Exactly. Show us, show us, show us the math of just like we show Jeff the ratings for WCW when Vince Russo got there. We presented the ratings. Present us with those numbers. This is just like, trust me, trust me, bro. Trust me, bro. It's one of those things. I say so. WWF from 1990 to 1998, all the money they made. Nah, AEW is going to pass all that in one year next year because I say so. Bro, what about the NWO money, the Hollywood Hogan money? Like, bro, do you know how many NWO shirts were sold, bro? I bet you you what he's doing. I, I bet you he's confused as shit. I bet you he's not talking about profit. He's talking about this goddamn TV deal, and he's not considering the actual expenses that the company's going to have. Well, he's for- also not talking about what, what you know. What was the price of a TV deal in 1990 compared to 34 years later, bro? Yeah, that's why I think he's. That's why I think he's not talking actual profit. He's talking well, gross. That's like, the problem. We 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 shouldn't have to sit here and guess what he's talking about. Right. Show us the numbers, bro, so we know what the hell you're talking about. Other, otherwise, you're just blowing hot air out your ass again, bro. I, I can't like you. You consider yourself a top reporter, but yet you this is your report with absolutely right. zero substance to it. Right. Right. You imagine anybody anywhere else. A reporter in another industry saying this about that industry right with zero things to back it up <laughs>